after its stock price rose 1,000% over the last 12 months, there was a lot of excitement around China's largest electric automaker, or at least its highest valued automaker. And yet, this $87 billion conglomerate hasn't sold a single EV yet. While others are getting on with it, producing electric vehicles, such as Volkswagen in Europe, Tesla in China and America, this company, the largest EV company by stock market value in China, like I said, has yet to manufacture or deliver or sell a single EV. This suggests to me that the market around EVs is in a bubble. EV makers such as Nikola also never made an EV, likely never will make an EV, and yet were valued at more than double GM as recently as three months ago, show that the EV market really is in a huge bubble. And I highly recommend not investing in an EV startup unless you have done your research extremely, extremely well. Otherwise, I believe you will get burned. Bloomberg News reports, China Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Group Limited's expansive pop-up showroom sits at the heart of Shanghai's National Exhibition Convention Center. With nine models on display, it's hard to miss. The electric car upstart has one of the biggest booths at China's 2021 auto show, which starts on Monday, opposite the storied German automaker BMW AG. Yet its bold presence belies an uncomfortable truth. Evergrande hasn't sold a single car under its own brand. China's largest, China's largest property developer has an array of investments outside of real estate, from soccer clubs to retirement villages. But it's the recent entry into electric cars that's captured investors' imaginations. Shareholders have pushed Evergrande, NEV's Hong Kong listed stock, up more than 1,000% over the last 12 months, allowing it to raise billions of dollars in fresh capital. It now has a market value of $87 billion greater than Ford and General Motors combined. Such exuberance over an automaker that has repeatedly pushed back forecasts for when it will mass produce a car is emblematic of the froth that has been building in EVs over the past year, with investors plowing money into a rally that briefly made Elon Musk the world's richest person and has some concern about a bubble. Yes, there really is a bubble. Perhaps nowhere is that more evident than in China. Home to the world's biggest market for new energy cars, where a mind-boggling 400 EV manufacturers now jostle for consumers' attention. 400 EV manufacturers in China, led by a cabal of startups valued more than established auto players, but which have yet to turn a profit. So those 400 EV manufacturers in China are valued at more than the world's global car companies currently building cars. That is a huge bubble which could crash, probably will, within the next 12 months as the wheat gets sorted from the chaff. Now, guys, I believe this and the coming collapse of energy assets, which is going to happen within the next five years, as many energy assets, coal and natural gas assets, are written off completely in combination with this huge EV bubble we have. I believe these two things could cause a significant share market crash. As you can see here in the graph, Evergrande NEV has a market value more than several times that of traditional car makers. Evergrande NEV was a relatively late entrant to that scene. In March 2019, Huai Ka Yan, Evergrande's chairman and one of China's richest men, vowed to take on Elon Musk and become the world's biggest maker of EVs in three to five years. Obviously, that won't happen, but they certainly may succeed. Time will tell. Tesla Inc.'s Model Y crossover had just had its global debut. In the two years since, Tesla has gained an enviable foothold in China, establishing its first factory outside the US and delivering around 35,000 cars in March. Chinese rival Neo Inc. earlier this month reached a significant milestone when it produced, when its 100,000th 100, EV rolled off the production line, prompting Musk to tweet his congratulations. Despite his lofty ambitions and Evergrande NEV's rich valuation, Hawaii has repeatedly pushed back car production targets. The tycoon's 
coterie of rich friends, among others, have stumped up billions. But making cars, electric or otherwise, is hard and hugely capital intensive. Neo's gross margins only flipped into positive territory in mid-2020, after years of heavy losses and a lifeline from a municipal government. Speaking on an earnings call in late March after Evergrande NEV's full-year loss for 2020 widened by a yawning 67%, Hawaii said the company planned to begin trial production at the end of this year, delayed from an original timeline of last September. Deliveries aren't expected to start until sometime in 2022. Expectations for annual production capacity of 500,000 to 1 million EVs by March 2022 were also pushed back until 2025. Still, the company issued a buoyant new forecast, 5 million cars a year by 2035. For comparison, global giant Volkswagen AG delivered 3.85 million units in China in 2020. Now, let's be frank here, away from the article, let's be frank. If this company takes until 2025 to deliver 500,000 vehicles, then the game will be over for them. The game will be over if it takes them that long to deliver 500,000 vehicles. They will be a tiny player in the market and they will most likely be squashed. I believe they need to get a move on, otherwise this company will potentially go bankrupt. It's not just Evergrande's delayed production schedule that's raising eyebrows. A closer look under the company's hood reveals practices that have industry veterans scratching their heads from making selling apartments part of car executives' KPIs to attempting a model lineup that would be ambitious for even the most established automaker. It's a weird company, said Bill Rosso, the founder and chief executive officer of advisory firm Automobility Limited in Shanghai. They've poured a lot of money in that hasn't really returned anything. Plus, they're entering an industry in which they have very limited understanding. And I'm not sure they've got the technological edge of Neo or Xpeng, he said, referring to the New York listed Chinese EV makers already deploying intelligent features in their cars like laser-based navigation. A closer look at Evergrande NEV's operations reveals the extent of its unorthodox approach. While it's established three production bases in Guangzhou, Tianjin, in China's north and Shanghai, the company doesn't have a general car assembly lineup and running. Uh, the company doesn't have a general car assembly lineup and running. Equipment and machinery is still being adjusted, according to people who have seen inside the factories but don't want to be identified discussing confidential matters. In response to questions from Bloomberg, Evergrande NEV said it was preparing machinery for trial production and would be able to make one car a minute once full production is reached but who knows when that will be. The company is targeting mass production and delivery next year of four models, the Heng Chi 5 and 6, the Lux Heng Chi 1, which will go up against the Tesla's Model S, and the Heng Chi 3, according to people familiar with the matter. The company has told investors it aims to deliver 100,000 cars in 2022, one of the people said, roughly the number of units Neo Xpeng Inc. and Li Auto Inc., the other US-listed Chinese EV contender, delivered last year combined. But remember, Tesla is likely to deliver, to deliver over a million cars in 2022 in China. Its workers are also being asked to help sell real estate, the backbone of the Evergrande empire. New hires are required to undergo internal training and attend seminars that drill them on the company's property history and have nothing to do with car making. In addition, employees from all departments, from production line workers to back office staff, are encouraged to promote the sale of apartments, whether through posting ads on social media or bringing relatives and friends along to sales centers to make them appear busy. Interesting tactics. Managerial level staff even have their performance bonuses tied to such endeavors, people familiar with the measure said. Meanwhile, the ambitious targets have Evergrande NEV turning to outsourcing and skipping procedures seen as normal practices in the industry, people with knowledge of the situation say. While it's hiring aggressively and recently scored Daniel Kirchert, a former BMW executive, who co-founded EV startup Byton Limited. The firm has contracted most of the design and R&D of its cars to overseas suppliers, some of the people said. Contracting out the majority of design and engineering work is an unusual approach for a company wanting to achieve such scale. Sounds a bit like Nikola. 14 models at once. One of those companies is Canada's Magna International Inc., which is leading the development of the Heng Chi 1 and 3, one of the people said. 
I think this is a good decision. Magna are known for being able to deliver high quality cars. Evergrande NEV has also teamed with Chinese tech giants, Tencent Holdings Limited and Beidou Inc. to co-develop a software system for the Hengqi range. It will allow drivers to use a mobile app to instruct the car to drive via autopilot to a certain location and use artificial intelligence to switch on appliances at home while on the road, according to a statement last month. A spokesperson for Evergrande said it was working with international partners, including Magna, EDAG Engineering Group AG, and Austrian parts maker AVL List GmbH in developing 14 models simultaneously. Sounds extremely optimistic to me. Representatives from Magna declined to comment. A Beidou spokesperson said the company had no further details to share, while a representative for Tencent said the software venture is with a related firm called Beijing Tin Move Technology Company that operates independently. Tin Move Tin Move didn't respond to a request for comment. Rather than staggering model releases, Evergrande NEV appears to be rolling out every type of car all at once under its Heng Chi brand which sports a roaring gold lion on the badge and translates loosely to unstoppable gallop. The nine models being launched span almost all major passenger vehicle segments from sedans to SUVs and multi-purpose vehicles. Prices will range from about 80,000 yen, 12,000 US dollars, to 600,000 yen, although the final cost could change, a person familiar said. I would suggest that if they plan on competing with the Model S and Model X, and I guess the equivalent vehicles from Mercedes and BMW, the prices will be over 1 million yen at the top of the range. That's a completely different product development strategy to EV pioneers like Tesla, which only has four models on offer. Neo and Xpeng have also chosen to focus on just a handful of marquees, and even they are struggling to break into the black. The market has proved the effectiveness of the one product in vogue at one time strategy, said Zhang Ziyang an automobile industry researcher at North China University of Technology. Evergrande is offering many products and expects a win. There's a question mark over whether this will work. A big question mark indeed. Without any long-term car-making noose, Evergrande has issued uncompromising directives to meet its latest production targets, according to the people. Two models, including the Heng Chi 5, a compact SUV that rivals Xpeng's G3, are targeting mass production in a little over 20 months. To hit that timing, certain industry procedures like making mule cars or test bed vehicles equipped with prototype components that require evaluation may be skipped, people familiar with the situation said. Evergrande told Bloomberg it has entered a sprint stage towards mass production. Slightly alarming if that's true. As it is, Bloomberg could only find one instance where Heng Chi 5 has been showcased in public in photos and grainy footage released by Evergrande in February as the cars drove around a snow-covered field in Inner Mongolia. The company's shares surged to a record. Glossing over these steps is unusual, said Zhong Shi, a former automotive project manager turned independent analyst. There's a standard engineering process of product development, validation, and verification, which includes several laboratory and road tests in China and everywhere else, Zhong said. It's hard to compress that to shorter than three years. While there's no suggestion Evergrande's approach violates any regulations, its stock market run could be in for a reality check. After similarly hefty market gains, some EV startups in the US that have yet to prove their viability as revenue generating profitable entities have lost their shine over the past few months amid concern about valuations and as established car makers like the Volkswagen move faster into the EV fray. Guys, there are 400 EV makers in China. The EV, the valuation of those 400 makers is as high as all global car companies currently producing vehicles right now. That is a huge bubble. And this is a bubble I believe will pop at any moment. Thanks for listening. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.